Scarcity of natural resources due to increase in demand is brought about by the global demographic momentum of consumption. Human consumption of nature is catalyzing climate change, thus impacting negatively on the sustainability of natural resources in every corner of the globe, including the communities of Sherbro Island on the southwestern coastline of Sierra Leone. Wide-scale use of harmful fishing practices, the intrusion of vessels clamoring for thousands of tons of fish annually, and the rippling effects of climate change are proving to be obstacles to the ability of current government policy to address the new challenges of poverty alleviation for people living in vulnerable coastal communities, such as those located in Banff namely those who were spoken to in Bohol, Delkin, Mania, and in the municipalities of Bont and Freetown who are relevant in the future of the fisheries sector. 64 to 80 percent of national protein diet is dependent on fish and there are issues of sustainability involving depletion of mangrove spawning areas due to fuel wood collection overfishing, habitat interference by humans, and the effects of climate change. Therefore, the availability and the price of future stocks is threatened. In Bohol, Delkin, and Mania, the communities acknowledge that there is overfishing to the extent of intrusion by foreign vessels and a negligence by most communities to dispose of the monofilament nets which are harmful to fish breeding and damaging to marine ecology. Bohol is solely dependent on fishing for a livelihood that is fast dwindling. Foreign trawlers are frequent in this area and cause a lot of problems for local fishermen. <laughs> My name is Osman Panabon. We are the government representatives down here, yet we face little or no benefit. Our women solely depend on the trade of fish we catch. But relatively, if there are no fish, everybody suffers. Even to pay fees for our children becomes difficult. Had some of us not been authorities or role models representing the government, like myself the chief, truly the majority of us would have run away from home as there are no benefits here. While catches are dwindling, there is a corresponding decline in the economic vibrancy of the households, with the burden of housekeeping, child rearing, and medical provision resting on the shoulders of women in the community. How are you? My name is Hawamusa. Our husbands are fishermen and they used to catch lots of fish in the past compared to current fish catch. Our husbands, children and family incur huge amounts of debts to acquire appropriate fishing gears as governments did advise to practice best fishing methods using sustainable materials. But these fishing gears are destroyed by trawlers and repaying the value of the debts becomes a problem in our land. Now both the Bonth Sea and Atlantic Ocean are intruding into Bohol cyclically and bush farming is not done in this part of Sierra Leone except for fishing and that has also been stopped due to insufficient fishing gear. Hence, automatically, all of Bohol will go into extinction. 
The whole fishermen are also concerned that there is not enough support from the central or local government to assist them with problems such as the competition from foreign vessels. The 1994 Fisheries Act was legislated in order to address some of these problems. Twenty years later, both the government of Sierra Leone and the fishing sector have obligations to fulfill. One of these obligations is the protection of artisanal fishermen against foreign fishing vessels. The trawlers literally take the fish away from the local fishermen and often destroy their nets in the process. Since the introduction of the 1994 Fisheries Act, equipping the ministry in charge of fisheries and supporting patrol efforts have been new obstacles which the government of Sierra Leone is gradually overcoming. The recent government procurement of this patrol boat, launched earlier in 2015, is an example of this commitment. The Environment Justice Foundation, EJF, had been accredited by locals across the district of Banth for bringing international attention to the wide-scale poaching of Sierra Leone's fisheries. But international attention was also a reprimand for the shortcomings of the government, and while the government of Sierra Leone is stepping up its patrol efforts, counterparts, civil society monitoring bodies for fisheries have not been as prominent in Sierra Leone. The success of any NGO partnership with the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources depends on the advice of the Parliamentary Committee with oversight on NGO matters. According to the Ministry sources, without this advice, the Ministry was therefore unable to meet with Green Scenery for the purpose of talking about fisheries issues related to climate change, harmful fishing and trawler incursions in this documentary. Evidence of trawler incursions is undeniably an urgent prompt for the government and the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources to recognize the need for the review and enactment of the Sierra Leone Fisheries Management and Development Act of 1994 and the Fisheries Bill of 2010, as well as to scale up surveillance efforts. If the government of Sierra Leone follows the direction of where such policy reform is pointing, then the country will intensify the fight against illegal fishing and ensure that best practice is maintained by the local and foreign fishing vessels. Based on this need to reform, government would also be expected to inform coastal communities about climate change and introduce them to alternative livelihoods to cope with the rising sea levels and dwindling fish stocks. Such policy implementation would benefit a community like Delkin. The dwindling fish stocks have brought more competition and more congestion to this village as a growing hub for fish transit. The situation at Delkin is more adverse due to the effects of climate change, lack of modern fishing techniques and an imbalanced relationship with the government's marine sector. This summarizes into food insecurity and lack of social amenities. The chairlady of Delkin confirms this. My name is Lombe Kamara. I live in and was born here in Delkin. I am head of all women in this village. As women, we are faced with several problems. Our husbands go out to sea and spend up to two weeks sometimes without having any catch. When our children get small nets and attempt fishing, they also get nothing. We sometimes go for weeks with gari, being the only food we give our children. The children are sent away from school because there is no money. Even the teachers are angry with us because there is no money to buy books or even uniforms as our biggest challenges. 
Every time there is a high tide, we get water in all the rooms in our home. You can see for yourself, here is the house. Next to it is a fire for the fish drying banda. We will be working in the kitchen. Next thing you know, the house is on fire. Coastal erosion is already a visible problem in Delkin as with many other parts of Bunth and the Sierra Leone coastline. Rising sea levels will spell disaster for this community which is already forced into congestion by the encroaching waves. Water intrusion is forcing the community boundaries two meters back every year with no retreat against the adjacent marshlands. Fishermen have been witnessing the depletion of the shoreline and some of its ripple effects such as congestion and the attached fire hazard. I am Tabe Ansumana, chief of Delta. Our biggest problem in this village is the sea intrusion. Year after year, the community has to move backwards away from the shoreline to avoid the water. Every time there is a really big wave that comes to the community, this is the reason why all our houses are built close to each other. Fire accidents are also frequent. And in this community, it's because of the congestion. Fishermen at Delkin are not only being pushed further inland, but are forced further out to sea for their customary catches. This is not helped by the fact that monofilament nets, which have been banned by government, are still in use. The conflicts arising between artisanal, small-scale and large-scale fishing vessels are common in this region. The harbour master at Mania is found repairing another net to replace those destroyed by the trawlers. Tree stumps on the banks close to Mania show evidence of where this community was once located. Floods are frequent in this community because of the rise in sea level. The rise in sea level, the increased rainfall which has brought more silt into the river and alleged sand deposits from adjacent titanium dioxide mining have increased the water temperature and displaced fish to deeper, cooler waters where the fishermen also pursue them. These patterns fit the FAO description of climate change effects on fisheries and aquaculture, such as indirect socio-economic effects arising from alterations to fresh water and response of fish to the direct physical impacts of sea level rise, flooding and storms. According to the FAO, climate change imperils the structure and function of already stressed coastal aquatic ecosystems. Going further distances to sea brings a lot of risks and two deaths in Mania have been reported just this season. For this reason, the community has set bylaws in place that no one should go to sea at night or late in the afternoon. The issue of bylaws is well understood by both the government and local communities. While awaiting government support to make local bylaws more operational, the communities in the coastal region of Bunth still endeavor to maintain a structure of bylaws on their own. This is an indicator that government should support the formulation of local bylaws and provide training and equipment to enable local enforcement of the bylaws. In Mania, such support could help address some of the current issues they have with foreign agents, such as debt accumulation and the number of vessels going to sea. Regulation and monitoring of fishing is a big concern for the community of Mania. Even though they were prepared to take the lead in the process, their community monitoring associations say they have not been operational. The CMAs could be marginalized because the fishing industry remains a big income generator. 
In the past seven years, Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources statistics show revenues rising from nearly 5 billion leones to over 30 billion leones. But illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing still results in an economic loss of $20 million annually in Sierra Leone. However, local fishermen are also contributing to the reduction of fish populations by overfishing the stocks which are not properly matured for consumption. Small filament nets often catch newly spawned fish that will never make it to open sea. Fishermen argue that the government replacement nets were not forthcoming. This includes members of the Amalgamated Artisanal Fishermen's Union. If any fisherman at this time needs to use the wrong fishing gas and the responsibility of the government, I am Halaji Saidu Sise, Secretary General of the Sierra Leone Amalgamated Artisanal Fishermen's Union. If any fisherman is using incorrect fishing gear, it's the fault of the government. When former ministers were in charge of fisheries, they took nets away from fishermen and registered their names without even consulting civil society, which is a violation of the Sustainable Fisheries Guidelines, which all MDAs in Africa are obliged to adhere with. Communities say that by paying their license fees and taxes to the district council annually, they are operating as best they can within the law. They say the disappointment over the replacement of proper nets is one issue, but negligence by government to consult them on key development issues affecting them is another flaw which must be corrected. A local fish processing center built by government is used to put this point across. For instance, the Bunth Fish Processing Center built by government stands as a white elephant another typical case of problems relating to consultation. The mayor of the Bunth municipality acknowledges that there are safety and livelihood problems associated with their close proximity to coastal waters, but has also seen possibilities to amend these problems. We are also challenged by the fact that um, the trawlers are destroying the nets of our local fishermen and currently causing unnecessary stress and economic burden on them. We are very much concerned. I am not, at up to this moment, fully aware that our fisher folks are still using bad fishing gears. What I am convinced about is the fact that we have launched a lot of campaign on the riverine areas we have launched a lot of sensitization programs on the community radios. We have set up uh, community management associations at various points to make sure that they talk to our fisher folks to desist from using the bad type of uh, fishing gears. Harmful fishing practices still persist in Sierra Leone, downplayed by an apparent abundance. Global overfishing will make tropical waters such as the coast of Sierra Leone more attractive as it is easy to access by poachers because of lack of surveillance. Global warming and its effect on sea temperatures and the climate will bring fishermen further into harm's way by depletion of the fish at their source of spawning or at their point of harvest on the high seas. Climate change and illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing competition from industrial fishing and improper fishing practices will continue to create problems for revenue generation by government and reduce the chance for wealth creation by local fishermen unless the framework of co-managed responsibilities outlined in government policy and legislation is implemented. Thank <laughs> you.